Okay, the first step in a setup process is um, the truss rod. Now, before we do this, and then throughout the entire setup process, you should make sure that your base is in tune. So we're gonna just give it a quick check. Doesn't have to be perfectly in tune, but you're gonna to wanna to have the kind of tension on the strings that would you, you would be using when you normally play. So why do you have a truss rod? Um, consider the fact that you have this long wood neck with four strings that are under tension. As a result, that tension causes the neck to bow up in the direction of the strings. And that bowing is called relief. And that's desirable over a certain range because it enables you to have good playability over the entire range of the neck. However, if you have too much bowing, you can end up having impossibly high action at the upper registers. If you don't have enough bowing, then you can have some weird artifacts like buzzing, rattling, um, I call it fret slaps, and just other weird things. So there is a certain amount of bowing that you want to have. So in order to control that bowing or relief, manufacturers place inside the neck a metal rod that's called the truss rod. And on one end or the other, there's gonna be a nut. And by tightening that nut, you decrease relief. In other words, you lay the neck more flat. If you loosen the nut, then it's gonna increase the relief. Well, how much relief should you have? Well, there's a fairly easy process, which we'll do uh, right now. You check for the correct amount of relief by laying a straight edge over the entire range of the neck and then measuring the clearance at the halfway point. Now you can use a, a nice straight edge that's correct length in order to, to um, check for that, but you really don't have to because you already happen to have four very good straight edges on your base and your strings. So therefore the process simply becomes one of fretting at the first and last frets and then using the thickness gauge to measure at the midpoint, which is the eighth fret. So the the common gauge for base setup um, is 15 thousandths of an inch. That's 0 0.015 inch or 0.38 millimeters. And as I said, you fret the first and last frets and then use the gauge at the middle. Well, that requires three hands. If you don't have a buddy to help, that's why we have a capo. Just freeze up a hand for you. So we're going to go ahead and put that on. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. All it's going to do is be holding down that fret. Now for the purposes of setup, set the capo on top of the fret rather than behind it. And to keep gravity from being uh, an influence on this, we're going to tilt the base up to playing position. And with the one hand fret at the last fret, let's get the gauge up. And we're going to want to carefully slide it in at the eighth fret. Now, if you find that it's pushing up the string as you slide it in, that means the neck does not have enough relief. It's laying too flat. Therefore, you need to loosen the truss rod screw to increase the bowing. However, if you slide it in and you find that there is still some remaining gap, that means you have too much relief and you're gonna to wanna to tighten the screw to bring it down a little bit. So let's have a quick look here. What I'm seeing is a little excess gap um, even though the, the gauge is in there. So that means we need to reduce the bowing or relief and we do that by tightening the truss rod nut just slightly. I happen to know on this guitar, it uses a 3 16 inch wrench. And as I mentioned earlier, the need for a, um, um, a ball in, this is a good illustration because this neck access the truss rod nut from the pick guard and the manufacturer decided not to leave very much access. So therefore, we can only get it at an angle here. We're gonna to wanna to tighten it just a little bit. And if you don't have enough leverage, you can use the um, screwdriver um, with one of the bits removed to get a little extra leverage. Ideally, between truss rod adjustments, you should give it uh, five, 10, 15 minutes. Um, to allow the neck to settle because since the neck's made of wood, it is gonna resist those changes in adjustment. Um, but we're gonna take just another quick look. Before we do that, we're gonna check tuning. So we're gonna put the capo back on. Be sure to fret the last fret, slide it in at eighth fret. And that's good. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do before we go to action, which would normally be the next step, is we're gonna do a one-time check on this, and that's for the nut. 
The nut, as you probably know, uh, not only provides for correct spacing between the strings, but there's slots that hold the strings at the certain depth as well. And um, there are actually guitars that come from the factory that don't have proper uh, nut depth or maybe some uh, unqualified tech uh, did some filing to your nut that caused some problems. I'll give you a great example out of bass that it, I had set it up just perfectly and it was still buzzing like crazy on the E string and it was driving me nuts and it wasn't until I checked the nut that I realized that the slot for the E string was cut too low and therefore it was causing the buzzing. Now I do recommend that if nut work's required you leave that to a qualified technician but as a temporary measure, I was able to shim it up a little couple uh, small pieces of business card stock to raise the string up slightly and uh, able to use the base until I got that nut work done. Okay, so we're going to get out a thickness gauge again, somewhere around 20 to 22 thousandths of an inch. I'll start with a 20 thousandths inch gauge, which is 0 0.020 inch. No frettings required. And we're just going to slide it in at the first fret and have a look. And this looks right on. So we're good there. It's not something you ever really have to check again on um, this instrument um, unless you do some work to the nut. So the next step uh, in the next part is going to be the action.